seems to be some kind of a tail wagging the dog. It's a little bit too much. And we have a 90% compliance or high end most of our organized labor. We have the obstacles in one group that seems to want to be directed at the entire show. It's cost us a lot of time this morning moving forward. So. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I, I would say that. Uh, I'm very impressed with the, the progress in reading this and the anecdotal understanding and, and information that I've obtained over the past year that I've been, been here. I think we made a lot of progress, and that progress wouldn't have been possible without the participation of all the bargaining units. Uh, it's true that uh, uh, for, for some units in particular, we mentioned the Teamsters, they've had some concerns, but uh, the recent meetings and uh, uh, I think a, a better understanding of our shared goals uh, is helping us on that front. So um, I know that we intend to engage in the dialogue with all the bargaining units and other stakeholders, including the board, obviously. So that's, uh, this is a, a positive step forward, and it's going to help us to, to be transparent. It's going to be merit-based, uh, which is important. It's going to be more responsive and quicker to, to fill and, and uh, identify the right candidates for positions and make it uh, really open to all candidates. The reference that uh, Martha made to my, uh, I guess, uh, not being really enamored with the title of employee relations, I should expand on that just briefly so the board understands. When I, I hear the term uh, employee relations, I tend to migrate right to labor relations. And, and in today's times, uh, and for some time, uh, the industry and private and public sectors have been moving more towards human resources and, and things of that nature. And so uh, uh, my mid to long term plan or goal is to probably revisit that. But in the interest of where we're at today and the fact that we're going through this process, uh, for the short term, we're going to stay as the employee relations department. But I think the scope of the role and the impact to the organization is much broader than that. And it, uh, uh, I hope to take away from just the labor relations only focus because we do so much more in terms of of re recruiting and retention and training and development uh, that is so important and is more broad than, than uh, what I think the title implies. But to uh, Martha's point or Director Watson's point about the title change right now, if it's put in law, we'd have to go back to the legislature to change our name from employer relations to human resources, which seems a waste of the legislature's time, quite frankly, and, and, and quite frankly, our time. So uh, moving more things procedurally into rules where the, the commission and everybody can revisit those and, and keep them fresh and, 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 and uh, current, uh, I think is a good thing. And that's one of the outcomes that the director is looking to achieve with this. And quite frankly, I think across the board, uh, all the bargaining units uh, would like to achieve as well. So I think this is a, a positive step. And we just want to reinforce to the board that we're being very open and want to work with and have a dialogue with all the stakeholders. And I think that's been part of the concern that this would be a top-down um, uh, mandate, which even if that's the proper decision, sometimes it's harder to, to swallow than a participative process. And we're uh, having a very good process and, and want to continue to be robust in that. But, I want to compliment Director Watson on, on this brochure. Uh, I candidly said, help me understand why civil service reform is so important. And there's this obvious, you know, it's 65 years old or whatever the statutory language is. Uh, we're, we're clearly in a, a very modest minority of, of uh, entities that have this uh, uh, statutory uh, imposition, if you will, or mandate, I should probably say. And uh, uh, I think that uh, this brochure helped to talk about what's in it for, for employees, what's in it for our department heads as they try to manage and be more nimble in today's uh, economic and budgetary times, and, and, and for our citizens in terms of how they can get uh, the, the best service and the best uh, employees to support the uh, St. Louis County operations in the future. So I think this is really good. And I, I want to clarify on the back page where it says proposed in law. These are some of the, these six points are, the, are some of the highlights that help crystallize the discussions that we're going to be having and the outcomes that we want to obtain. We don't have a new law yet. Uh, we have ideas that, well, you know, quite frankly, maybe we can, we've got something mocked up that we can share with folks. 
But these are some of the outcomes that we hope the law will achieve. And then, of course, putting it into uh, uh, rules and procedures that just makes a lot more sense, especially with retaining the commission as the uh, director is, uh, is proposing and which is important to our bargaining units. So uh, I, I think this is a good read, an easy read, and it resonates across the board for all the stakeholders involved. So uh, uh, we want to just give you that update. There's been a lot of focus and even occasional tension around this topic uh, uh, to date, despite the progress we made, despite the, uh, the, the task force, the committee that has been so helpful in identifying affinity groups and other uh, initiatives that have uh, helped us uh, to make progress already. This is to go after kind of uh, the big piece of the puzzle that will make it uh, much more efficient for the county and open and fair to employees and serve our citizens best. And that's what our goal is. And we look forward to working with our stakeholders in that regard. Very good, very comprehensive Just for the record, I'm curious about what are some of the more progressive and larger counties in the state of Minnesota call their departments? Employee relations and human resources are the most typical. I thought in government, since we have acronyms for everything, I thought CURSUS, so then we could have Human Relations, Employee Relations, and Civil Service all in the same acronym. <laughs> this, this sounds too much like a funeral vehicle to me. So oh, come on. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 